What is the broadcast flag? The broadcast flag is all about control. It's about what you can do with the television programming you receive over the air. Who says what you can record off the television, play back on your device of choice, or send clips over the internet? Today, you do. Consumers and educational institutions have always enjoyed that freedom. But a copy protection scheme called the broadcast flag threatens those traditional consumer freedoms. But why? The broadcast flag was proposed by the content industry because they were, and continue to be, concerned about piracy. Specifically, they say they were worried about their high-value content being distributed willy-nilly over the internet without their permission. They told the FCC that they needed copy protection for this HDTV because if people can copy their shows and send it over the internet, they'll have less incentive to create high-quality programming, and the move from regular over-the-air analog TV to digital HDTV will fail. The FCC, without getting permission from Congress, adopted the content industry's broadcast flag scheme. But how does it work? The broadcast flag's copy protection doesn't encrypt or scramble the television programming. Instead, the television signal is sent out free and clear, with an imperceptible digital flag embedded in the broadcast signal. If a device is broadcast flag compliant, then it knows to look for the signal and respond accordingly. The FCC set up a set of rules to which manufacturers must build their devices, and at one point, some 13 technologies were approved. It sounds simple and harmless enough, right? Well, let's look at some of the problems. The broadcast flag is not effective. If someone wants to copy HDTV and put it out on the internet, all they need to do is stay with their current consumer electronics and they're safe. Since the television signal hasn't been scrambled or encrypted, those of us with current and older non-compliant devices are safe since those devices won't know how to look for the flag, so it's ignored. No respect for fair uses. Although the broadcast flag claims to restrict mass infringement over the internet, the fact is that it prevents non-infringing uses as well. Discussing a video clip about an important news story in a distance ed classroom, copying it to your device of choice, or posting it to a blog for political or social commentary, all would be prohibited. Compatibility wasn't a goal. The FCC did approve 13 technologies, but none of them are actually compatible with each other. That means it'll be a nightmare not only trying to decide which device to buy, but further consider which of 13 incompatible technologies to invest in for future purchases. It will be very costly. One requirement of broadcast flag compliant consumer electronics is that they not talk to non-compliant devices. That means, once you introduce a compliant device, it will refuse to talk to your older, non-compliant electronics. Either you'll have to pick up used out-of-production devices or replace all your older devices with all new compliant devices. Either way, it's expensive. The good news is that a number of groups concerned of these problems sued the FCC and had the broadcast flag thrown out. Unfortunately, content industry has been pushing Congress to reinstate the broadcast flag ever since. So call your member of Congress and tell them that the broadcast flag doesn't effectively prevent piracy. It will be very costly to the buying public, and it limits or prevents many uses of content important to education and democracy.